Without water, we as humans will not survive. So it's vital to our life every day. Here at the Department of Public Utilities, our mission is to provide high-level water and sewer services to the county's residents. It's a serious process. It's a defined process. You gotta have water. You gotta have water. Our job every day is environmental. Uh, there's no more water here than it was 10,000 years ago. Water is just a giant cycle that rotates over from the clouds, goes through the you know filtration and whatnot through the ground, down to James River itself, where we pick our water up. So the water's water's been used before. So we're, it's our job to make sure that the water's clean when it's put back in the river, and it's our job to clean it when it comes out the river before we distribute it to the water system for the citizens. People tend to take it to, for granted that you know your water is just going to be there, but it's a long and complicated process to ensure safe drinking water for the public. And it all begins right here from the James River. We're at the intake structure of the Henrico County Water Treatment Facility. Right now, we're at a high level in our river. And from this point, this is the product we're dealing with right now. It's considered raw water in our terms. And what, what happens is that it is taken into the, to the transmission lines and it takes approximately 16 hours from the time it starts at our present flow to the time it enters the plant. At that point, we do the remainder of the treatment. It all starts with the James River. Um, that provides water to the vast majority of the Central Virginia area, the Richmond region, and Henrico certainly relies on the James River it's, as our primary source for public drinking water. And the water we send out and deliver to our customers is, is better than national safe drinking water standards. Every moment of every day, uh, folks are turning on the tap and, and just not having to think about the safety of that water supply that's delivered to them. So we have a lot of professionals certainly that take pride in that. We have a group of very talented staff who work to operate and maintain the system 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We're taking the water out of the river that's in pretty good condition cleaning that up so that we can use it for our use, domestic or, or commercially. And then the, the opposite side, we're cleaning it back up, putting it back into the river better than what it was when it came out. The whole cycle is what we're impacting. Whatever's in the river is what we end up trying to remove. The process here is uh, we are a conventional water treatment plant with the uh, high-end process of ozone. But basically what we do is we add a chemical to help make all the particles in the water heavy enough to settle out in our sedimentation basins. After that, we hit it with the ozone as our primary disinfection. It goes through a series of filters that are not unlike what you do for a swimming pool with using a filter, and then we backwash those. After that, we add a, a couple of chemicals into the finished water, and it's ready to put in a distribution system. It's a continuous flow process. The water treatment plant here in, for Henrico produces water, obviously, for Henrico County, basically from 95 west. We also push water up uh, Route 33 to Hanover, and we also supply water to Goochland through uh, several connections to them. As part of a long-term contract with the City of Richmond, we have to purchase about 12 million gallons per day, annual average. The entire East End is fed by the City of Richmond, and then that excess water that we have to buy is blended with the water from the plant, blended in the distribution system. There are no times that the plant's not operating. The operations crew here is uh, extremely dedicated to what they do. The operations side of the water treatment facility is very important. I've got much respect for the operators. They're the ones who are producing the water. The maintenance is upkeeping. We're keeping the equipment up so they can produce the water. It's not just 
water. It's a process. In today's day and age with the technology that we have, we have computers that, that uh, give us a lot of information, but you still have to go back and do the manual testing. You have to verify physically, hands-on, that, that all of your equipment is operating properly and doing what you want it to do. We do this with all of our chemicals that we uh, feed to the water, to the raw water to treat it so that it comes out nice and clear for our customers. They're expecting it to be there and that is our job is to make sure that we're meeting the standards and putting it in a distribution system so that it can be there. Generally the, the public's demand on water services occurs, it peaks twice a day. Uh, it generally peaks in the morning, everyone gets up. It's getting ready for school, getting ready for work, uh, consuming a lot of water during that period of time. So that's, that's generally our highest peak of the day. And then there's another diurnal peak uh, we would call uh, towards the end of the day when folks get back home. We have to be prepared to deliver water when people need it. And we have our pump schedule set up so that we can run the pumps during those time periods and we can put more water into the system to uh, help the plant so that the plant can run more on a stable uh, time schedule so that they aren't ramping up and down and making chemical changes to uh, take care of the peak demands. Our systems on the water side certainly have to be designed to store water and get it ready for those peak times of the day. Uh, that's our tankage. Uh, folks see the Cox Road tank next to Interstate 64. That's two million gallons of water sticking up in the air that's there ready to supply water when it is needed. Well, the elevated tanks are at the highest elevations. That's where you see, we see your lowest pressures at the higher elevations. So that's why we have the Eubank tank out near the airport and then the Cox tank is nearest the water plant. In addition to the supply for when water is needed, uh, public water systems also have that storage that's there to provide fire flow you know, for emergency conditions or needs. That's why the pipes have to be you know, sized properly too to deliver enough water when people need it but also uh, not too big or the water won't be fresh enough by the time it gets there. So those are things that all go into the planning of a water system to support the needs and the growth needs of a community. We in public utilities are responsible for approximately 1,600 miles of uh, water mains and approximately 1,500 miles of, of sewer mains. I like to refer to it as a tree system. It starts off from our water treatment plant and then you have larger branches that carry water throughout the system and as they go to customers' homes or depending on the type of service, they decrease in size. Most people don't realize, but the majority of our infrastructure, both water and sewer, is underground and most of it was uh, put in the, in the 1950s and the 1960s and most of that infrastructure is uh, coming back around for replacement and the Department of Public Utilities is working very diligently to rehab and replace and renew all of that infrastructure. So behind me you'll see a repair that our crew is making to a water main. Water main breaks can happen for several different reasons. One being temperature. Uh, sometimes during the colder months, for instance, uh, the ground will harden and that can cause some stress to the pipes and can cause a break to occur. And just overall deterioration over time can cause um, a failure in the pipe as well. We make uh, repairs as timely as possible to prevent any disruption of service to our customers. On the wastewater side, it's kind of the same thing. Wastewater pipes and systems in the ground become more leaky over time, so they're taking on more groundwater over time through the joints and the cracks that just age. We really are very careful to make sure that our, our sewers are doing what they're supposed to do and maintaining the sewers inside so that they're going to the proper place. We're trying to prevent problems. It's a lot easier to prevent it than to fix it. So we put a lot into maintaining what we currently have in the ground and making sure it's up to par because if we just ignored it, just put it in the ground and walked away from it, we have all type of problems. And if we didn't look for potential stoppages or blockages, eventually that sewer is going to back up. Then you have an environmental problem, you know, potential for people getting sick, you know, getting into the federal waterways and killing the wildlife and, you know, contaminating everything. So it's very important that we maintain these things and do a lot of preventive maintenance cleaning. One of the ways we find out what's going on is we have a camera crew and they come out and they put cameras inside the sewer pipe and they televise it. So they're going in there and they're looking for a stoppage. 
we're looking for roots or if the pipe has collapsed or any of those things. Once we find the problem, we coordinate with our repair crews and they come out and do a repair. Because the majority of our infrastructure is underground, oftentimes when problems arise, it takes a huge effort, uh, both uh, manpower and equipment, uh, to address these issues. So when residents uh, see that uh, there are trucks or that a, uh, a lane of a road is, is closed off, it's uh, because our staff are diligently working to address an issue. The amount of repairs that we have um, it may seem like a large volume to customers, but when you think about the amount of pipe or uh, distance of pipe that we have, you know, it's ver a very small percentage of pipes that we're making repairs to. So it's, it's full circle in that we get to repair and provide water, and it's, it's a nice job to have. Once the, the sewer leaves the house, whether it's through the sink or in the toilet, that water travels down through underground sewer pipes. Um, it travels through gravity, um, but after a while, we have pump stations set up, um, or we also call them lift stations. And they lift it back up and oftentimes feed it right back into a gravity line until it gets to our wastewater treatment plant, which is on the far east end of the county. Every pipe has a beginning and an end, and the water reclamation facility is located at the end. And that's where we receive all of the dirty wastewater from the whole county, and we make it really, really clean and put it back in the James River. It takes approximately about three days for wastewater to get from the far end of the county in the west end to, to actually treatment in the east end. There is a lot of infrastructure required to deliver the dirty water to the water reclamation facility. It ultimately comes into the facility in an 84-inch box culvert, which is a pretty huge pipe. So what uh, mostly arrives uh, is um, tr some trash and debris. I think candy wrappers might be one of the most common things. Uh, feminine hygiene products, which we would like to see uh, all these things not come to us, but we screen them out up front and that material is taken to a landfill. And then 99.9% uh, you know, .9 of what comes to us is in a dissolved, organic, rich uh, wastewater stream, gray water, it could be referred to as. Uh, we leverage um, things like gravity to settle solids out. We use filters uh, to filter things out of the water as it moves through. But the heart of the process is a biological process where we leverage naturally occurring microorganisms to convert the pollutants into less harmful byproducts like water and carbon dioxide. It's one huge biological reactor is what it is. It's all about the bugs, keeping those bugs happy. So, this is our blower screen right here. Uh, this is one of the most important places in the plant. This is what provides all the oxygen to our bugs in our biological process as well as keeping a certain amount of our product afloat so that it doesn't settle out. Essentially what we've got is big, huge fish tanks uh, where we create the right environmental conditions for these microorganisms to thrive, and we manipulate those conditions to get the organisms to perform certain tasks. They never stop, and they, keep, they just keep going day in and day out, making the dirty water clean. Uh, and the trick is to keep them happy and in balance with the food that's coming in. People always are amazed that when they go to see the final product that leaves here, it looks no different than what you would find in a swimming pool at home compared to what it looks like when it came in. But our job here mainly is to make clean water, keep the James safe for everyone, and to provide a service for our customers, which is to handle their effluent from their homes or their effluent from their businesses and give them a safe place to distribute it to so that we can treat it and put it back into the James River. Here at the Water Reclamation Facility, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of science and technology that goes into the process to make the dirty water clean, and it really is an exact science. On a daily average basis, we clean about 40 million gallons a day. And that's kind of a, a hard number to wrap our mind around, but uh, uh, Olympic-sized swimming pool holds just over a half a million gallons. So we're treating about 80 times that on a daily basis. We are currently on top of the final effluent at the water reclamation facility. The water that comes out is very clean, as you can see. It's almost 
crystal clear and you can see right through it. The water reclamation facility is located about two miles from the James River and our final effluent discharge to the James River comes out underneath the Varina Enon Bridge, also known as the 295 Bridge over, over the James River. And when the water gets there, it's uh, a lot cleaner than when we pulled it from the river to send to the drinking water plant. In fact, uh, Henrico County's wastewater discharge is almost drinking water quality standard. Both the treatment of the water and the treatment of the wastewater, the standards are very, very high. So we're both doing the same thing. We're both removing the solids and, the, and that type in the water. It's just that we're a chemical process and they're a biological process. The Henrico County Water Treatment Facility is one of our largest industrial contributors uh, because they have to settle all the solids that were in the James River when they took the water into their plant. They have to remove all of those solids and ultimately all of that material comes to the Henrico County Water Reclamation Facility where we settle those solids out along with our other solids and ultimately land apply the material as a Class B biosolids product uh, that farmers love to receive because it has a lot of great benefits for them, uh, nutrient content as well as moisture. But you would not be allowed to produce a product that would be consumed directly by humans. We generate about a hundred tons of biosolids or solids that are removed from the process and about 600,000 cubic feet of gas a day. And those are pretty much our end products. You could think of us as like an industrial manufacturing facility. We make water, gas, and biosolids. Uh, and everything else that we screen out up front is taken to a landfill and disposed that way. So we're doing a lot of recycling, and that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. That's the basic goal here, um, just to be good stewards of the environment going forward. We talk a lot internally about keeping the trust, keeping the trust of our customers, of our community, of our coworkers, um, of the place that we serve. If our job is right and we're doing our job right, the customers don't know we're here. And that's really what it's all about. But yeah, we take a lot of pride in what we do. I am also a Henrico County customer. And it's so, it's so awesome to be able to turn on my faucet and know that some part of my job is involved in making sure that the water got to my particular home. And so I do take pride in being a county citizen as well as a county employee.